My name is Noel Scherer. I am the manager of retail and e-commerce here at Luella Wine, Beer and Beverage. And I'd like to welcome you to your video for the May 2023 installment of the Luella Wine Explorers Club. We hope you're enjoying the club and I think you're really going to be excited about your selections for May. There's some really cool stuff in the four pack this month. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the wines. The first wine in your selection is Los Bermejos Diego Seco. This is a white wine from the Canary Islands, specifically from the island of Lanzarote, which is the easternmost of the Canaries. Uh, Bermejos is uh, the product of a winemaker named Ignacio Valdera, and I really love this estate. This is a winery that I've known about for quite a while. Uh, Back in 2006, 2007, I worked for the New York City distributor for these wines, got to visit the winemakers in Spain, and I've always thought these wines from the Canary Islands were very underrated, underappreciated, and really, really beautiful. Um, Lanzarote uh, lies just about 125 kilometers from the northern coast of Africa, so the climate here is quite hot, uh, quite extreme weather conditions. Uh, the soil conditions, in Lanzarote are quite unique and amazing. It really looks like the surface of the moon. And each vine in a vineyard on Lanzarote is planted in an individual sort of crater that's dug out of this volcanic rock. This is both to break through the volcanic rock and to get the roots to be able to get down into uh, nutritious soils below this rocky surface, but also to protect the vines from the extreme winds that blow in off of the sea onto the island. It really is one of the most unique terroirs in all of the world. Uh, this particular wine from Bermejos is their Diego Seco Ecologico. So Diego is the grape variety here and Seco meaning dry and Ecologico to designate that this is one of their certified organic vineyards. Um, I really love this wine. It has all the flavors of a wine that's being grown in sort of an extreme volcanic island situation. It's very stony, it's very saline, it has a very, very strong kind of salty quality to it. This wine is fermented and aged entirely in stainless steel tank for about three months, uh, sur lee, as they say, meaning it's aged on the sort of fine chunks of grape skin and yeast that settle at the bottom of the tank. This is a method of elevage typically used in for Muscadet wines in Loire Valley, and this wine has a very similar uh, structure to a muscadet. As I said, very crisp, very mineral, and has a wonderful saltiness to it. So this is great with any seafood. Get yourself a beautiful piece of fish, grill it or broil it with a lot of seasoning, and this wine is going to be absolutely perfect with it. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, the next wine in your four pack this month comes to us from the slopes of Mount Etna in Sicily. This is the Ivignieri Etna Rosso. Um, this is 2021 vintage. Um, Ivignieri, which uh, means the wine growers in Italian, is a project that was started by a very well-known winemaker in Sicily named Salvo Foti. Um, Salvo Foti is a consulting enologist for a lot of the top estates, especially in the Etna region, uh, in the vineyards right on the slopes of the volcano, including uh, an estate called Benanti, which has long been a favorite uh, Sicilian estate of mine, very difficult to get in this market. Uh, they seem to kind of go in and out of supply here, but I was excited to hear about Salvo Foti's project here where he has sort of marshaled the resources of a lot of really terrific growers working organically who have vines on the slopes of Etna, and he's basically created a kind of kind of an old classic co-op for them. Uh, Even Yeri harkens back to a historic co-op that used to exist uh, amongst the Etna growers. In fact, the label says 1435 on it to uh, give an indication of when this original co-op uh, was originally founded. Um, but uh, this wine, the Rosso Ivignieri, as they call it, uh, is a blend of 90% Norello Mascalese and 10% Norello Capuccio. Those are the two most traditional red varieties grown on the slopes of Mount Etna. And in the agreement between uh, Salvo Foti and these growers, they were each allocated a certain percentage of the grapes they grow every year for him to make a wine for them to drink for their own consumption. Uh, and then Salvo kind of asked them if they thought it was okay if he sold a little bit of it uh, to his export markets. So what you've got here in this bottle is actually the wines that the wine growers themselves 
paid uh, the winemaker Salvo Foti to make for them, for them to drink at home. Uh, tiny little bits of this come to the United States, so we we're pretty excited some was available. Uh, this wine sees six months aging in underground amphora, so that's those big kind of classic clay, um, very ancient looking vessels that a lot of winemakers are using again that uh, uh, they kind of feel is a more traditional way of making wine uh, without the use of oak uh, and also not having to use the more technological stainless steel. I really love this wine. It has all the kind of classic black cherry notes you expect from Norello Mascalese and Cappuccio and that sort of leathery, um, taut, kind of very high energy palate feel that you get from wines grown on volcanic soils. Uh, very much like the Bermejos wines, so this is an expression of red from a volcanic soil as opposed to the white. So already with your case this month, you're getting a little bit of a counterpoint to show how different types of grape varieties uh, respond to being planted to volcanic rock. So hope you enjoy this. This is a very, very food friendly red. It's not heavily tannic, although it does have some tannin, uh, but it's more mid-weight and will pair well with a lot of different types of food, and especially Southern Italian food, of course. Okay, the next wine in your four pack this month is a wine that I'm really excited about. It's a new discovery for me, a brand new estate that I'm just finding out about. This is Quinta do Giovali. This is an estate in the Douro region of Portugal. Uh, I was lucky enough to attend a tasting here in the area about a month ago of a portfolio of brand new wines to the American market from Portugal. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening in Portugal right now. Um, there's been a big increase in quality uh, a lot of kind of the classic story of the younger generation of families taking over and moving their family estates into a more uh, sustainable organic direction and also stylistically into a more sort of food friendly, light and bright and energetic style of wine. Um, of course, the most famous wine from Portugal is Port, which Ports are fantastic, but they're big, heavy, fortified wines. They're not wines we enjoy just at the table with dinner. There's something we have a small amount of as a dessert wine. And this estate, Quinta do Giovali, historically um, was a, a estate that produced grapes for port. Um, it's the Mendez family, Antonio Mendez, uh, founded this estate uh, in 1982 from vines that uh, he inherited from his grandfather and great-grandfather. Um, but in 2015, he and his son really started taking the winery in a different direction. In 2015, they started to farm biodynamically, um, and they started to focus their attention on the higher elevation, cooler sites in their vineyard, sites that maybe in the past, they weren't growing grapes to make port because you want really rich, overly ripe grapes to make port from. Um, this particular wine uh, that they call their cherry tree wine comes from one of the highest elevation sites in their vineyard, um, and comes from 90-year-old vines planted at the very, very top of the slope. Um, Quinta do Giovali takes its name from uh, wild pigs, Giovali, that actually roam these vineyards and till the soil. Uh, they also do all their plowing here by horse. So this is a very, very um, natural, uh, old-school uh, farm, and they're making really fantastic wines. Uh, this is a field blend. There's about 20-something different varieties in here. I won't even try to list all of them, but uh, I really enjoy this wine. This is the 2020 vintage of the Cherry Tree Vineyard Cuvée. Uh, bright cherry, um, lots of spice, but it's not tannic spice. Uh, a lot of stone. As I said, there's a lot of slate. If you look at pictures of this vineyard, you can see just big slabs of slate jutting out of the ground, so there's a real mineral backbone to this wine. It's fresh, it's bright, I would serve it with a chill. Really great red to have as the weather gets warmer and warmer, so you're grilling some steaks or burgers, pop open a bottle of the Cherry Tree Vineyard from Quinta do Giovali and enjoy. Okay, for the last wine in your four pack this month, I picked out a very special bottle. This is a dessert wine. This is a Vouvray Moyeux from Le Clos de la Meslerie. So 2015. Um, Vouvray, of course, a village in the Loire Valley, very famous for Chenin Blanc, um, which the Chenin Blancs from the Vouvray appellation range all the way from dry sparkling wines to dry still wines, all the way up to the richest 
late harvest, botrytized, extremely sweet dessert wines that you can find. The Moyeu style, uh, and the word Moyeu means soft in French, is basically a off dry style. It's a medium sweet style of wine. So it's not as unctuous and heavily honeyed as let's say a sauterne or an ice wine would be, but it does have a fair amount of residual sugar. So it does uh, work very well as a dessert wine, but also uh, people use Moyeu also as a great pairing with blue cheese. Uh, any kind of kind of sharp veiny blue cheese really pairs very, very well with wines with this amount of sweetness, especially uh, Chenin Blanc. Uh, Claude de la Meslerie is an interesting story. This was an historic property that was acquired back in 2002 by a gentleman named Peter Hahn. Uh, it's an interesting story because Peter Hahn was not a winemaker. He was someone who made money in finance, loved wine, and kind of fell in love with the idea of uh, getting back to nature and growing wine. So he acquired this state which had fallen into terrible disrepair. Uh, the vineyards were overgrown. Even the cellar was just completely just full of junk and unusable. It took him several years to get it all cleaned up and he went to school for winemaking. Uh, and I believe his first vintage was in 2009, 2010, 2009. Uh, it's a tiny estate, only four hectares uh, total. He works totally biodynamically. Everything he does in the uh, vineyard is by hand, hand harvested, hand sorted, um, natural yeast fermentation only. Uh, I got to taste this a couple of months back and just thought it was beautiful. I thought this was one of the most delicious uh, Moyeu style Vouvray's I've tasted in a long time. 2015 was a warm vintage, which wasn't necessarily great for drier style uh, Vouvray's, but for those in this style that relies upon the botrytising, the raisinating of the grapes, it really was kind of an ideal growing season. Um, so this is a beautiful dessert wine. Again, have it uh, at the end of a meal with cheese. You could have it, uh, I kind of like these, these off-dry Chenin uh, wines with like apple pie. For some reason, I think that sort of apple flavor uh, and uh, kind of molassesy flavor uh, pairs really well with it. But you try it with a bunch of different things. These wines actually keep very well in the fridge after you open them because of the combination of sugar and acidity in the wine. So you don't even have to drink the whole bottle all at once. It'll keep well easily for a week in your fridge after you've opened it. So uh, that's the lineup for this month. Uh, remember, for the month of May, you have the opportunity to buy all of these wines for 20% off the shelf price. So the Meslerie Vouvray would normally be 50 and it would be uh, 40 during the month of May for you. Um, the E. Vigneri would also be 50 normally on the shelf. For club members, $40 during the month of May. Uh, the Diego Seco from Bermejos normally would be 47 on the shelf, 37.60 during the month of May. And uh, there it is. The Cherry Tree Vineyard from Claude de Jovale, that would be normally 41, 32.80 for club members during the month of May. So cheers, guys. Talk to you soon.